Today, I answer the age-old question, can I beat Pokemon Platinum with a single Starly? It's going to be brutal because I get no type coverage, but that's what makes it fun. Overall, I have a base stat of 245, with speed being the only decent stat. So as long as I can move first, double team might be necessary. I know Rourke is not going to be happening anywhere under 30, but it should be somewhat smooth sailing for a bit after that. Anyways, time for the rules. I can only use Starly. Other Pokemon will be needed for HMs, but they cannot be used in battle. If they get sent into a double battle, then they can only attack Starly. Number two, no cheats or exploits. And number three, no items in battle. Let's begin. I decided to pick Chimchar as my starter to give my rival an Empoleon, probably the hardest for us to fight, seeing as all the others are weak to flying and steel resists everything we can learn. As soon as I get Pokeballs, I catch a Starly and the run begins. Chimchar gets thrown in the box, never to see daylight again. I named the star early Star Raptor because it's funny. The early game is balanced for bad stats, so once we get Quick Attack, nothing really stands a chance. Before we have to deal with Rock types, I get Wing Attack, probably a permanent move. I decide to try Brock at level 20, but it's just not happening. I try Learning Return, a friendship based move, another permanent move, but it does the, about the same. Time for some more levels, I guess. Level 25, and I finally managed to beat him on the third try. Just barely, though. It was all thanks to being able to get six double teams in and start cheaping away at their health. The next stretch isn't really worth talking about. The only issue was the Perugly doing half my health and faint in a faint attack. But when it decided to start using Scratch instead, I easily won. Now on to Gardenia. But Sharon was only able to hit a Leech Seed before healing with a Super Potion. The other two just went down in one wing attack each. F easy first try. I then lost to some random trainer with a Geodude and an Onyx. The Galactic Hideout was very easy. I worked my way to Fantina, but it was way different than I thought. I was expecting Duskull to burn Staraptor with Will-O-Wisp, but instead of using it, it used Future Sight. Haunter can only hit us with Sucker Punch. However, Fantina decides to not go that route, but to confuse me, put me to sleep, and then waste all five Sucker Punches. I still lost that attempt, thanks to Confusion Damage and her next Pokemon hitting me with Magical Leaf. I fought some of the local trainers and ended up at level 37. This time, it goes much smoother, and I win. Once again, nothing eventful happened in the next part. So now it's time to talk about the next hurdle, which I was not expecting, Maylene, the fighting gem. Sounds easy, but with Rock Tomb doing half my health and lowering my speed, it just wasn't happening. I figured it was about time to test the hidden power type, and it was Bug. Probably the worst type to get. I was hoping for a ground type to deal with the part steel type Lucario that stopped me from winning, as well as the eighth and final gem, the electric gem. So I once again fought all the local trainers and started trying, and after a few double, double teams, I managed to beat her. I walked to Pastoria Town, since I already beat most of the trainers on the path. There, I have to fight Barry, and for once he actually holds his own and beats me. But a Silk Scarf to boost Return's power in a few levels and a few double teams, I win. But not before getting the majority of my health taken out by a Bubble Beam. I am not looking forward to that beast evolving again. Crash Awake just isn't happening. His waterfalls do way too much damage, and I can't get my double teams in. And his Gyarados has Intimidate, so my attack is down for the entire fight. After half an hour, I decided to go grab the Shell Bell. It gets rid of my 20% boost to return, but I'll get one-eighth of the damage I do to his Pokemon. The Shell Bell gave me almost nothing back, so I go back to the Silk Scarf. On the only attempt I get past Gyarados without getting hit by a waterfall, Floatzel nails me with a massive Ice Fang almost one-shotting me. Luckily, it misses Aqua Jet as I finish it off, but Quagsire comes out and it survives a return, and lands a rock tomb to finish me off. One more turn, and I would have won. Another half hour later, I decided to grind to level 60. As long as I can survive two waterfalls, I should be able to win. Two and a half hours later, I finally hit level 60 and start trying again. After a few attempts, it's still not going well. But on this attempt, I managed to get six double teams in while barely surviving on seven health. 
I thought for sure this was a doomed run until Gyarados misses the next waterfall, letting me take it down. Floatzel gets critically hit for a one-shot after missing Aqua Jet, and Quagsire misses Rock Tomb, letting us get the victory at level 60 on the third attempt. I chase down the Galactic Grunt, get the medicine for the Psyducks, and fight Cyrus, who was much easier than expected. I then caught a Buizel, taught it Surf, and fought Barry again. I made him on tr try two after a few double teams and made my way to Byron, the Steel Leader. It took eight tries to get a run where his Magneton didn't hit Thunderbolt for a one-shot after my double team. On the one that it missed, I got six double teams off and critically hit it for a one-shot. Then, the brick wall Bastiodon comes out and returned us almost nothing. Luckily, its only attacking move is Stone Edge. It's pretty inaccurate and only has five power points. Unluckily, it has iron defense to max its defense. At this point, I'm only hitting for one damage. I fight this damn beast for 10 minutes. I even got hit with the Stone Edge, but I lose when it runs out of power points and has to use Struggle. It takes itself out as well as me. Now I'm left pondering whether to try for better luck or grind up to level 70. Either way, it's probably not happening anytime soon. After some thought and consulting a friend, I decided to grind up to level 75. I'm going to give myself 10 tries at level 65 and another 10 at 70, unless I do really good on some of them. But after Byron, I still have Candace, the Ice Leader, and Volkner, the Electric Leader, and Starly is weak to both. This does give me some time to think about the next run, and I'm thinking about an Emerald Pugiana only. But I think I might be able to beat him at this level after a few more tries, as long as I get another run where Magneton misses enough Thunderbolt to for me to get a few double teams in, and then have Bastiodon miss Stone Edge. And considering the inaccuracy, that might be a bit faster than having to grind all the way to 75. I still have to take attempt after attempt after attempt before I win, and it still wasn't happening, so I start grinding. A little over the way through, I figured it might be a good idea to go ahead and grab every rare candy and power point up as I have access to right now. It gives me more attacks on my stronger moves, and if I have to max out my level, those 10 rare candies are going to save hours. At level 70, I take another crack at the gym and discover that I can now survive a Thunderbolt but I don't think I'll be able to take out Bastiodon and a Steelix with 1 HP, especially since Steelix will just use Sandstorm, and I can't avoid damage from that. So I guess I have to get another attempt where Magneton misses 7 Thunderbolts back to back, or I could replace the Silk Scarf with the Shell Bell. I'll be doing less damage, but at least I'm guaranteed to get 1 HP back per attack, and with my moves doing a quarter damage to Bastiodon, I don't think damage output is going to change all that much. Maybe I should look into berries to remove EVs for special attack, since I won't need any of those, and EV train some special defense. I'm going to need some more for the next two gems after this one. I did some research into EV dropping berries and find that one lower special attack. However, it comes from the berry master who gives them out once a day, so it may take a while. But I can't put everything on hold to wait, so I guess I'll just see what happens. After two days of off and on grinding, honey trees for Munchlax so that I can get the leftovers, trying for a Hondu Berry, I hit level 75 and start trying again. Somehow, despite me having 10 more health, I still can't survive a Thunderbolt like I did that one time at level 70. I decided to give myself an hour to try at this level before I go to 80. Luckily, during the grind, I figured I'd pick up all the rare candies I have access to at this point, as well as the power point ups, so the highest level I have to grind to is 90, but hopefully I won't need to do that yet. This scares me full for, for Volkner, but I think he and Candace will be easier since Bastiodon's base defense is 4.87 times our base attack. It doesn't hit all that hard, but it just does not go down easy. On Two of the attempts I get to Bastiodon, he just finishes me off with Stone Edge. I decide to stop going for double teams and just try and get a crit, crit with return on Magneton and use double team on Bastiodon. 54 minutes in and I'm still not making any progress. I take a look at our learnable moves and realize that Endeavor might be able to help me. If I can get up to six double teams, 
and get hit by only one Thunderbolt, then I can immediately get Bastiodon into red health and I might be able to take it down quickly. The only issue is, I th is that I have to get rid of Wing Attack, but at this point I have enough power points to be able to beat things without needing it. Plus, Endeavor is probably going to be useful later in the game. Even with Endeavor, it's still just not happening. That's when I take another look at Bastiodon's stats and discover that it's a low health, high defense Pokemon. An awful realization. I hope tomorrow's berry and honey tree encounters help me, otherwise it's back to the grind. The next day rolls around and no Hondu berry, and no Munchlax in the morning. But that's to be expected, as it's only a 1% chance, but if I find one, it has a 100% chance to have the leftovers, which will weaken Endeavor, but if I get them, I'll go learn Wing Attack again. After several more tries, I manage to get a run, where Magneton misses all 7 Thunderbolts, and it, it takes to get all the double teams and 2 returns off. Then, Bastiodon misses all of its stone edges, and I manage to outlast it as it runs out of power points and takes itself out finally. On to Steelix. It manages to hit two Ice Fangs, dropping me to just 28 health before Return heals me to 33, and it misses its next Ice Fang as another Return finishes it off. Finally, this ungodly fight is over. This singular fight took almost three pages of this script, but now I can move on to Candace. I make my way to the drained Lake Valor, fight Saturn, go to Lake Verity, fight Mars, and go to Mount Cornette. On the other side of Mount Cornette, the snow-covered path to Snow Point City is available. I make my way through it, and I, and I arrive in town. I enter the gym, beat all the trainers, heal, and get ready for the fight. I decided to replace the shell bow with the silk scarf to get a little more power behind return. Attempt 1 begins great as Sneasel goes down in one return, but Obama Snow sets up hail with its ability, survives a return, and my heart drops. But it only uses wood hammer for some reason. I would have lost if it had used avalanche. But thankfully, Pillowswain and Frostlass go down in one return and fly respectively. Easy first try head over to Lake Acuity and see Barry lose to Jupiter. I fly back to Veilstone to go to the Galactic Headquarters. In there, I make my way to Cyrus and easily beat him. However, I realize a horrifying truth. His Crobat is faster than me. That does not bode well for later. After the fight, Cyrus says that he doesn't make friends with his Pokemon, but yet he has a friendship evolution somehow. I make my way up to Spear Pillar fighting some grunts and admins on the way. Cyrus unleashes the equivalent of Satan, who starts merging the underworld with the regular one. So I, as a ten-year-old boy, have to jump into hell and fight an insane man to be able to fight the devil. The final Cyrus fight was tricky. At first, I go at it with a Silk Scarf boosted return. But Gyarados' Intimidate ruins that, as I fail to one-shot his Honchkrow and his Crobat afterwards. I keep trying for either a crit or for him to miss Ice Fang, but neither happens, so I slap the shell bell on and keep trying. On the winning attempt, Gyarados misses Ice Fang, so I take the chance to use three double teams and finish it off. I accidentally use Ice Wing, er, wing Attack because in a previous attempt I had replaced it with Roost, but I still easily won. I fight Satan and it barely does anything before my pet bird kills him. I make my way to Sunny Shore and go to the Electric Gem and face the biggest issue yet. Ace Trainer Zachary. His Magneton survives return and one shot me with Thunderbolt. It's like Byron, but with no point in using Double Team. I think the worst part is I'm pretty sure I can easily beat Volkner. His Jolteon should be the only thing that outspeeds me, and his Raichu has static. So a Cherry Berry and some decent luck, and I think I can beat him at this level. I could probably try for a crit on Magneton, but I figure I'll just grind up to 85. Still no Munchlax or Hondu Berry, but I just discovered the Wakan Berry, which halves the damage done by super effective electric moves, so that might be going af worth going after. I still can't beat this random trainer in this gym. I use some rare candies, level 89, and I still can't survive a Thunderbolt. That's when I look into the Focus Sash, and I discover that I can get one at Route 221, as well as a Hondu Berry. 
Sadly, the only way to get the Focus Sash is to have a certain level Pokemon, and today's was 61. I considered training a wild Pokemon up to it, but getting a level 40 Electabuzz up 21 levels just doesn't seem likely. At level 92, I am finally strong enough to survive a Thunderbolt from that wretched beast. Finally, that Magneton is dead and I can move on. God, that was awful. Worse than Byron, somehow. Time for Volkner. And I think it's going to go either one of two ways. Either he's going to be an easy sweep or I just can't beat him. Volkner is a complete sweep. Surprisingly, I outsped Jolteon and one-shot it and Raichu. Luxray manages to survive a return. And I start thinking about having to try just a few times to get past Raichu without getting paralyzed. But it's the... But his Thunderfang does less than half, and I just finish it off with two more returns after he heals. Electivire comes out, and I'm just thinking about how I'm not going to be able to one-shot it, but it's at least worth a shot. I watch his return hits it for all of its health. Seems like Byron was the major hurdle. Just before the Elite Four, we have one less fight against Barry, and he gives me some challenges, but a few levels, a change in items, and a few double teams and he goes down pretty easily. I sell all of the items I don't need and buy some X items just in case at level 100 I still can't win. I have a backup way to beat the game just in case I need to bend one of the rules. This run has taken long enough for me to say it isn't possible. Aaron is up first. Yon Mega goes down in one fly. Drapion takes a fly, hits a weak ice fang and goes down on the next fly. Vespaquin goes down in one fly, Heracross goes down to a four times effective wing attack. Lastly, Scizor goes down in one fight. Easy. On to the next big challenge, Bertha the Ground Trainer. Whiskash is a one shot with return, so on to Golem. It takes three returns and somehow manages to land enough thunder punches to take me down on every attempt. On one, I finally manage to get past that cursed beast. But out next is worse, a Rhyperior. That damn thing hits like a freight train. The only thing I can think about doing is having the leftovers to negate the sandstorm damage, because the show bell just isn't cutting it. But for now, I'm just going to try learning Roost and see how it goes from there. Roost is helpful for getting to Rhyperior more often, but it has Rock Wreck, the 150 power rock move that is a guaranteed death sentence. Luckily, though it's only a 90% accurate move, with 5 power points. I just need some decent luck and maybe using Fly to force it to miss more often, but it'll do less damage. I think it'll go down in 5 returns. It would be 4, but that damn thing has a Citrus Berry. I finally beat it and get to Gligar and realize that I forgot to start the recording. So regardless of how well I do now, I will have to restart. I beat her hip out on, so I know it's possible at this level with the silk scarf. So time to keep trying. I finally managed to get a run, where I managed to take out Rhyperior and finally beat her. Thank god I don't need to keep doing this fight. I am so tired of chip fights. Unfortunately, Lucian has a Bronzong, but thankfully there's not much it can do to me. On to Flint. The only worry I have is Flame Body. How Doom goes down in one return, Infernape and a fly, Magmortar, Flareon, and Rapidash each go down in one return. On to Lucian. Psychic types might be fast, but they're pretty physically frail. Mr. Mime goes down in one return, Gallade goes down in a fly, Espeon and Alakazam go down in a return each. But Bronzong does not want to go down. Psychic is too accurate for a miss, so either I get a crit, or when he heals, I use a double team to avoid it, and then a roost. However, sometimes he'll use a Calm Mind or two, so it'll do way too much for me to survive. I decide that maybe you'll see how I do with the Razor Claw. First try with the Razor Claw and I win. But not for the reason I was expecting, it wasn't the crit. But rather, getting rid of the boost to return kept it as a 3 shot but no longer sent it into full restore range, so it doesn't heal, and it won't stall me out before taking it out. Cynthia time, and I am terrified, but also relieved, as I might actually be able to get this out on the 4th, like I planned. 
Hopefully this goes smoothly, but she does have quite the reputation for slaughtering teams. Unfortunately, I just can't one-shot Spiritomb with Fly, even with the Skype Plate. I give it a few tries, and that's when I learn that Aura Sphere is unable to miss, regardless of how many double teams I use. I use some rare candies to max out my level to 100, put the Skype Plate back on, and start trying again. I think I might just be able to win, if I can get a crit on Togukiss. I can probably get to Lucario in full health. Somehow, that Spiritomb hits me, no matter how many double teams I use. So I'm just going to put the Razor Claw on and just keep hoping. If I can't beat it in the next hour, I'll switch to a different item. If I just can't beat her no matter what I try, I'll bend and use one Hyper Potion in the fight. I finally managed to get all the way to Garchomp, so I know it's possible now. I just need some ungodly luck, so no Hyper Potion, I guess. Spiritomb is pretty good to set the double teams up on, and if it misses enough, I can get back up to full health thanks to Roost. For some reason, the Razor Claw seems to not be boosting my crits, and I just don't get them when I need one. I just need one to one shot Togekiss, and I should be good. Finally, I get a run where I get a crit, sending me to Lucario in full health. I use Return so Fly will finish it, but of course, that's when I get a crit. And it nails a stone edge for massive damage when it gets a crit on me. Damn it. It was so good. I finally make my way back to Garchomp. I need return to crit for a one shot or for it to miss its dragon rush. A second return brings it into the red health, causing me to, causing her to heal and giving me two back to back returns that I need to take it down. Roserade comes out and it goes down in one fly. I just got put- I get put in the Hall of Fame, meaning this run is over. I managed to beat the entirety of Pokemon Platinum with only a Starly and no items in battle. This definitely had its ups and downs, and random challenges that I did not see coming, like that random Magneton in the Electric Gym. And there were some parts that were way easier than I thought they'd be, like Volkner and Candace being easy sweeps. So, yeah, I guess I'll start working on my next run. Pokemon Emerald with only a Poochiana. Thanks for watching. If you have any suggestions on what I should do next, let me know, and I hope you enjoyed watching. Have a great one.